Hi, today we're taking a closer look at the town of Kingston and specifically the Parks and Rec Department. And we luckily have Susan Woodworth, who is the director of the Parks and Rec. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate Thank you. it. We, every couple of years, we have you back for an update. So it was two years ago that I interviewed you and we did it via Zoom because we were just coming out of COVID. Um, and at that time, you told me you had been with the Rec Department for 23 years. So now you've been with the Rec Department for 25 years. That's correct. How did, and you still have a smile on your face <laughs> and you still love going to work every day. I do. So what brought you up to that point? I mean, what did you do before the 25 years you've been with Kingston? Sure, sure. So I worked um, actually in exercise science field for many years. And then I worked for Pilgrim Healthcare, which is now Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. And I did marketing and wellness events and different programs and things like that and worked with providers and um, some of our sales team to try to figure out different programs that would make our customer base healthy uh -huh. and things like that. And then yeah, I did, cool. yes, yeah, so it yeah. kind of just fit in. And then I had kids and my company was moving from Norwell to, we moved to Westwood and then they were moving to Wellesley. And that was just a bit too far yeah. for me with the yeah. two little ones. So I found a great opportunity right in my hometown of Kingston, uh, just a few miles away from where I live. and. Uh, it just worked out fantastically that I've just been able to continue to be there all these years. I, I do really love it still. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. And you've seen an awful lot of changes. Absolutely. In the town, in the population, in especially in Parks and Rec and what you can offer. So back in 2022, we talked about the Grays Beach Playground rebuilt, right. which is a big deal. And it had to be approved at town meeting, which it was. Yes. And it opened in 2023. So talk about that and how, how much of a oomph that was for the Parks and Rec Department. Sure. No, it's great. It, that park that we have down there, Grays Beach Park, it's just phenomenal. It's a little park that has a beach, tennis courts, basketball courts, grass area. There's just a lot of everything, a small piece of property. Yeah. And the playground had been over 20 years old. It really just needed um, an opportunity to kind of be revamped. It wasn't a safe and we needed to just look at some drainage issues. So it was a large project. Uh, we were able to address the drainage issues mm -hmm. and then the playground that we were able to build, it's a kind of called the universal concept, which just provides an opportunity for um, accessibility, a little bit different accessibility, also provides an opportunity for families to play together. Yeah. A lot of playgrounds have structures that are a little bit more challenging for us as adults to get through sure. and actually participate <laughs> with the kids. So this is a more open concept. So parents, grandparents, whoever, adults can just actually be part of the play, uh, which is really, really nice. We added some music components yeah, um, and, you, and just some great oh, things. Now you have a lot of things in the summer too. You have like um, bands and you have movies and you really make it a community event. Does that all go through your department? It does. It okay. does. Yeah. And that's kind of really what our mission statement is. It's building and enriching our community by working together. So that Grace Beach Park property just provides that opportunity. We do farmers markets where we actually don't run them, but we have work with an organization. And then there is, uh, like you mentioned, the movie nights yeah. uh, and then music nights, which Again, we get to work with our local musicians, yeah. and it's really, really great opportunity for us all to be together. Yeah, terrific. So um, there's an awful lot of different places and buildings and programs that you have. Um, and if you go on the website, for, and you have your own website, the, um, your reparation department has its own website, and there's just, there's just tons of opportunities. I, just, I, was, I was like, okay, I could spend three hours just looking through <laughs> what you offer. So you offer for, from, from kids all the way up to old people like me. Um, what are some of your most popular programs? Um, so a, a lot of, like you said, it's really for everybody. We do multi-generational programs. We do adult programs. For the adults, it definitely would be pickleball. We have a big yeah. pickleball uh, gathering. But we do some other programs. We do yoga. We do art programs for adults as well. Uh, so that just provides a lot of different opportunities for the adults to come together, also with the kids. Yeah. Uh, the kids programs, it just so many different programs. Again, art, sports. Uh, one of the big things we've been able to do in the last few years is partner with our elementary school and intermediate school, which is a huge asset for our parents so yeah. they can stay after school and actually do the program right there without having to be transported somewhere else. Oh, so yeah, it's just wonderful. a phenomenal a concept. It is in the last year or so. We worked with the intermediate school for many years, but the younger ones, it was just a little bit hard to manage. I always want to make sure that we have things in place if the program got canceled and parents were able to know, but we call it beyond the bell. Yeah. Uh, oh, so a lot of teachers also get to see their students in a different environment, sure. which is really nice for them. They get to engage with them in a little bit different ways. And it, that's been a really huge success as well. 
Now, do you bring um, instructors or, or, or people that will, will facilitate this after school time? It's actually the teachers. Oh, the teachers so the teachers it. in the school, they partner with us. Uh, so the school has to authorize the use for the teachers to use it, their classroom or the sure. location after school. And they're really creative. I mean, it's not school related things necessarily. We have embroidery, we do crochet, there's a yeah. fashion club thing that the kids are doing. So um, musical, little musical, they just do a phenomenal job. Oh, so it's wonderful. just really, really nice. Oh, that is fantastic. Okay. Um, has engagement in, would you say, overall increased or decreased over the past couple of years since we came out of the pandemic? I think it's actually increased. You know, there was definitely a shift for a while, but I think in the last, I'd say, year or so, our numbers are just crazy. We have just offer over 400 to 500 programs a year with over six or 7,000 registrations, and that's just the programming part. And as you mentioned earlier, we also oversee Grays Beach Park, which has so much going on there. And then we also oversee um, a couple of athletic complex areas. So again, huge amount of activity there for not only our youth, but we have adults that play softball there and things like that. And so it's just been really incredible to see people continue to come together. Now, is this mostly residents that take advantage of this, or do you allow people that don't live in Kingston to, to be part of the We, we do own, uh, offer non-residency opportunity as well. Uh, we usually let Kingston residents register first, sure. just because that's their We're money, <laughs> right? Yep. And then after a week or so, if registrations are still open, then we offer to non-residents as well for a little bit of an additional cost. Okay, wow. Now, for the summer, I know summer was always a problem, not a problem, but it's a, it's a challenge for parents. Mm. Parents who continue to have to work. Now, you, to you said you had the After the Bell program after school. What do you do for, for the whole summer um, as far as offering special special things for kids that maybe the parents need them to go somewhere during the day? Sure, sure. So we offer a lot of one-week-long one clinics. Um, those can be run anywhere from 9 to 3 or 9 to 12. So there's a, a multitude of those. We have a horsemanship program. Um, we do, uh, we're doing a new thing about nature, so we just have so many programs, but our main program is called KREC Connect, and it runs Monday through Thursday, either 8.30 to 11.30 is yep. an option, or 8.30 to 4, so okay. it really provides that opportunity maybe yeah. for working families that need a little bit more of a day, so we do a full day from 8.30 to 4 and a half day from 8.30 to 11.30, and that's for kindergarten through eighth grade, so it provides a wide opportunity, and we also run a preschool program, which is Monday through Thursday as well mm -hmm. um, for three to six year olds. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a big thing. And then on Fridays, we do what we call Freestyle Friday. Uh, we found a lot of times on Fridays, the, the just a lot of people didn't show up. People go away right. for the weekend right. in the summer yeah. or that. So it provides people not to have to pay for a day that they may never join. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this gives people that if they want to do it, then they have that option to add that Friday back in. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Now, do you ever find that you, you, you post programs and Maybe only one or two people would show up. What do you What do you do in a case like that? Sure. So we pretty much talk with our instructors ahead of time. Sometimes they need to, a week's notice. Some of them only want a couple of days. Yeah. Um, we continue to try to push it through different platforms, uh, different marketing platforms. But if there's not enough people there, then unfortunately we have to cancel it. Yeah. And then we let everybody know ahead of time, and they have the opportunity to use those funds for another program or to get a refund if we need to cancel a program. And do you have programs that fill up so fast that you? You, you, you need to add a second part to them? Absolutely, yeah. yes, we do. We have a lot of those kinds of things, especially in the summer. Uh, again, people are looking. We Our summer program registration opens beginning of April, yeah. so there's a lot of planning quite a bit ahead of time. And you're in charge of the beach stickers for Gray's Beach. We are. Now, I heard this nasty rumor that they sold out in like an hour mm -hmm. as, as soon as they went on sale. That was a true rumor, so it's, I guess, not a rumor, but that, yes, uh, this year is the first time we've ever experienced that. We opened them at 9 a.m., and by 10 a.m., the non-residents. Uh, so we offer about 200 or so non-resident parking stickers, yep. and then they were sold out in an hour. They still are available for Kingston residents. Okay. We continue to sell them for the Kingston residents as well. Okay. But, yeah. And what does what does that does that give you um, an opportunity to participate in anything that goes on at, in the Grays Beach area if you have one of those parking stickers? So that allows you to join the property anytime. If we do in community events, we actually open that up to everybody. Okay. So like our music nights or the farmers markets, they're open up to, to anybody. Us. Correct. Anybody can come. Correct. Yes. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay. And um, how did folks get in touch with you? 
So a uh, multitude of ways. So again, we have some social media platforms that they can reach out to us on. We have email as well. Um, obviously, I'm a big communicator and connection, so I love to talk to people. And you know, they can always call the office as well just to provide that yeah. connection that we talked about earlier in our community. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a bunch of different ways. So they can call the, our office or, again, yeah. just reach out to us through our uh, website as well. OK. And, um, this is probably not a fair question, but if you had a magic wand <laughs> and, you, and all the money in the world, sure. um, what, what would you do? What is, what is your ultimate wish to be able to offer to Parks and Rec? I think it really is affordable programming, you know, because there's so many different um, situations that people have. And just to be able to try to continue to offer affordable programming. So if we had more money, then maybe we could offer programming at a much reduced rate. So that would really be it and just continue to offer what the community asks us for. Yeah. And I think that's our biggest goal is to really listen yeah. to what people are interested in. That's wonderful. And do they do they often reach out to you? They do. And they, they make suggestions? They yeah. do, yes, and we That's ask great. for that. That's so, great. So That's it's great. nice. So you have a very good interaction with the people of Kingston. We do. We have a lot of fun over there. So Clearly. people appreciate yeah. that. Well, it's, <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the right job, I would say that. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, speaking to us today, and have a wonderful summer. Thank you, and you as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you.